uh, you just mentioned at the end there that um, uh, being a primate, that her chance of achieving a normal birth was um, about 25%, but I think they mentioned that she had a previous birth, um, albeit quite a while ago. Did, are the sort of numbers still the same in that case? Uh, well, um, I might say the figure of 25% is rubbery, but putting everything together, I was, I was showing you the data for someone who's aged 40 plus there. She's 47. So in my mind, I'm thinking it's going to be, if, if it was her first labour, it would be worse than that. But given that she's had a child before, maybe not quite as bad as someone who's having their first labour. That's where that, that figure came up. But I, I wouldn't be ashamed of using a figure of around that to counsel someone in those circumstances. I know the numbers aren't very large, but do you have? To, I don't probably need that. <laughs> um, I know the numbers aren't very large, but do you have the data dividing that older age group into their BMI as well? Um, uh, well, I, I, th I think it might be available. Wendy might be able to find that for you, but uh, to sort of I, I, but but your groups are going to be just so tiny yeah. there uh, that I just don't think you can come up with anything meaningful out of that. Yeah. You, with those numbers, you know you're going to have you have one. <laughs> Just assuming it'd be uh, less rates of vaginal birth in the heavier older population. Than but but I th I think it's reasonable to assume that if Tamara were obese as well, then her chances of achieving a normal vaginal birth would be minuscule. Just wondering if there are any statistics on these people that are going for IVF and for the older population that they're automatically electing caesarean section instead of even trying for a normal delivery. Well, I, I guess that's why I showed the data on elective sections in, in that age group, if, if I got your question right, to show that, yes, there may be some influence of that, but it's not gigantic. You know, I, mean, I, I mean, to me, I thought 16% at that age didn't seem too big to me, a, a, a rate for elective section. So I, I was trying to imply by that that I doubt very much that there's a tsunami of women demanding a caesarean for their first birth because they're, because they're concerned that they are getting on in age and, and uh, they have a limited reproductive life uh, left. Uh, I, I think that figure suggests that there's probably not a massive, it, it may be a contributor, but it's probably not a, ma not a massive contribution. Sorry, I just wanted to ask, are a, lot of, oh, sorry. <laughs> are a lot of these women, because of age and medical problems, also induced? And would that have anything to do with the increased rates? Uh, I, don't, I, I don't know the answer to that, I'm sorry. The uh, I, inductions, are frequent, and uh, because they've got a, a higher proportion of medical complications, I imagine there'd be more inductions. But I don't know whether you're suggesting the argument that in that inductions lead to caesarean sections, because I, I, there's a greater risk of having a caesarean in women who are induced. But I don't think anyone's ever been able to show that's because they were induced compared with, with not being induced. Um, you know, there's a, that it doesn't naturally follow just because uh, caesareans are associated with induction that it's the induction that's causing the caesarean. Looking at the time, we better, I guess, yeah. yeah. So, well, Tamara was induced, she progressed very, very in labour, but as we discussed, she required a force of delivery secondary to fetal distress in second stage. She delivered a 2.4 kilogram female, which required level 2 nursery care. Now, I am delighted to invite Dr. Chris Munt, who is well known by many of you guys. He is a neonatal, neonatal pediatrician who has worked within South Australia for 21 years and been a major contributor to neonatal services in the private sector. Dr. Munt. <laughs> it's been a very big uh, privilege to be here. Touch of anxiety, but that's okay. And, uh, and, um, and certainly I'm not a neonatologist, I'm a general paediatrician, but I've always had a, an active interest in, uh, in uh, uh, neonatal medicine and that's been the most uh, significant part of uh, my working life there too. I think it started with Bob at Stirling Hospital 
in 1994. Yeah, yeah, that's one too. But um, you know, we've talked about much of the uh, information and, and much of the potential challenges uh, for our uh, our, uh, um, our older parents in that as well too. And we all understand that there's a, a, a clearly a, a, an increased uh, incidence or increased risk of uh, neonatal morbidity and mortality and uh, unfortunately in, uh, for our uh, older uh, couples and that too. Much of, much of the um, uh, discussion from me is not going to be uh, of, uh, with the same expertise as, as my colleagues here, but uh, it's just based more on uh, experience. That Oh, okay. I think <laughs> things finish um, there as well. So, uh, I mean, uh, um, I think we all pretty much understand, don't we, the the, uh, the subsequent care that will be required for, for uh, Tamara and John's baby there as well. Um, uh, hopefully, the baby comes out in good condition, of course, and uh, um, and uh, obviously we'll be looking for any signs of respiratory distress, and uh, which is seen as, as we know in about 15 to 30 percent of uh, 32 to 36 weekers, but it's significantly modified with celestine and that as well. And uh, um, uh, uh, forced delivery was a good thing, I think. Bob, wasn't it in the end? <laughs> that was good. That was good. And um, uh, yeah, and we, I think, you know, having a little bit of labour obviously may support and minimise slightly the risk of uh, respiratory distress syndrome, of course. Labour may uh, improve surfactant uh, release. Um, so uh, um, yeah, so, so hopefully the baby's in good condition, but it does require nursery care, of course, because of its uh, uh, low birth weight. Uh, it's slightly small for gestational age, as we know, but not, uh, not hugely small, 2,400 grams, 26 weeks, but uh, so, uh, and nursery care would, of course, be regarding uh, respiratory uh, observation, uh, you know, um, assessment of uh, hypoglycemia, managing thermal stability, of course, as well, too, and then subsequently managing the feeding issues as well. Um, so, uh, so we, we all understand that, and not to, there's not a whole lot to say about that as well. Um, my uh, experience, interestingly, with nursery care over the years, I'm sure it's the same with everybody, is that um, some of our nursery uh, parents well, they go through the anxiety of uh, their baby being in the nursery, um, actually have uh, you know, a little bit of extra time to learn about what uh, normal babies do. And, uh, and uh, subsequently when they leave, they just have a little bit more confidence. And of course, we try to readmit them for a couple of days before they leave to, uh, to uh, build on that experience that they've had coming and going from the nursery and that as well. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I think they just... Uh, in general, in general, I think I, I may have seen, seen a little bit more confidence from uh, from our, our parents with uh, in terms of just general uh, care and management of their babies there too. But obviously, it's, it differs for every couple there as well. Um, the uh, it's obviously uh, um, the, the, the things we find. There's obviously anxiety. I presume uh, that, um, that with the, the expert counselling now of our uh, of our, uh, pa our parents who have. Um, Older, um, uh, who have uh, old, our older parents who have their babies, they understand the risk factors more. They understand their, uh, um, uh, they understand their, uh, you know, the, the potential for that, um, and may manage things. Uh, all those, uh, obviously, anxiety um, uh, uh, producing to have a, a sick baby, uh, they may manage it um, slightly better than the unexpected of the baby there as well. Um, Although there may be initial anxiety after the birth of the baby, that uh, anxiety may be a little bit more in our younger uh, parents because of their, their psychosocial setting at the time, because of their access to Google and the website, which uh, talks about lots of things but uh, doesn't necessarily put things into perspective. Um, uh, whereas older people perhaps uh, have, have a little bit more life experience and my experience perhaps have managed things a little bit better after delivery of their babies um, and uh, in subsequent care of the babies. The, um, the, uh, obviously, the risk factors need to be managed. Hopefully, we'd aim to get the baby home as soon as possible um, uh, if the baby's uh, feeding independently and not requiring any other special care. And, um, um, and after that, there's obviously some follow-up. Obviously, the baby that's had uh, uh, neonatal risk factors has an increased uh, you know, potential for issues with growth with time and for uh, issues with um, uh, uh, neurodevelopment. Um, and interestingly, uh, in, in older couples, there's uh, obviously we know there's a higher incidence of genetic syndrome and chromosomal anomalies, but also there is said to be a slightly higher incidence of autistic spectrum disorder in some of the kids, and there may be uh, some uh, increased incidence of, uh, of potential mental health issues and uh, and uh, behavioural and um, and uh, learning issues too with time. I'm not quite sure about the incidences of those, but I just know that there's, a, there's a, said to be a slightly increased incidence of those sorts of things. So again, uh, there are challenges that older parents may have to manage with their, with their children as well, there too. Um, 
the uh, Tara and John, it'd be interesting to know how they actually get on with it, having a 19-year-old. They've already got their babysitter, haven't they? They've got their babysitter there as well, too, in place, which you, did you work well for them. Um, um, I'm sure all of us have a different feeling about uh, the differences between younger couples and older couples. Um, as I say, I, I think having worked with uh, older couples uh, much more in the private sector uh, than our experts in the in the uh, um, uh, in the um, uh, in the public sector, I, I think uh, um, yeah, I'm not sure that I see a, a lot of huge differences in these first few months of management and, and ongoing management with time uh, of the kids. Um, but obviously the kids are more at risk and uh, there's the potential stressors uh, throughout life may exist for some of those and uh, for some of those families uh, because of the risk factors uh, for the kids and, um, and obviously that's a significant thing for them. Um, we've had a couple of different cases uh, over the years uh, or many different cases over the years. We've, um, uh, I'm, I'm not sure if it's uh, okay just to talk openly about a couple of cases that we've seen but um, um, I, well, we won't go into detail about them, of course. It's all confidential stuff there too. But we've had uh, at, uh, at Ashford Hospital a few uh, older parents in their uh, late forties, early fifties, in, in the last few years as well. And, um, and uh, in general, they've all coped well. Some of them uh, have had stresses in their relationship. Uh, um, some of them have had stresses because of uh, little problems, Down syndrome, things like that as well too. Um, um, uh, and um, uh, yeah, but yeah, in, in general, um, they've been uh, coping okay overall. And um, um, but we understand, as Erin pointed out, with the challenges uh, of uh, of um, uh, you know older age group and their own health and managing kids with potential problems, it's, it's obviously going to be a difficult thing. Um, so for them potentially as well. But I, I'm not sure I. I mean, although we see differences in personalities, of course, between the younger and older couples in terms of the management of the babies, you know, in general, once we want to have a baby, we're, you know, just beautifully committed to them and we just want to love and care for them and that uh, instinct exists for most couples uh, who have children. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm not sure I, we've personally seen a lot of uh, differences over time there yeah, as well. Um, <coughs> So again, not a lot of useful information, just a little bit of old experience out there too and, and, and a point of view or, or opinion. But um, yeah, I, um, I don't know whether there's anything else. Is there any other questions? Any questions?